This lesson is a brief look at the purpose of some of the startup scripts in the etc rc.d directory. The .d on the end of some of the names that you'll see in here simply indicate they are directories. The original run command script was named rc, so when a run command directory was added, it was named rc.d. By the way, this structure of startup scripts is not unique to Linux. This is the same basic form used on most modern Unix systems. If you want to use the VI editor to look around inside a file, but you want to be sure to open the file read only so you won't accidentally damage something, you can use the command VIEW instead of just VI like this. This is the first initialization script that's executed. It does the lion's share of the system initialization, and it's crucial to system setup. For example, the original path variable setting is made here. This is the start of the path. It includes the directories that contain system utilities, a lot of which are used during system startup. I'm not going to try to show you the whole script, it's just too large, it's almost 800 lines. One of its jobs is to set the system clock. As you can see from the amount of code required, there's quite a bit to do to get the system clock set. One of the reasons is all the time zones and whatnot. There are even two names for GMT now, it's also called UTC. Another very important responsibility of this script is to check the integrity of the disk drives. The program that does that is FSCK. This program will be run on each disk drive that was not cleanly unmounted before the system went down last time. It will also be run on disk drives that haven't been checked for long enough that a recheck time limit has expired. When you're doing your installation and you're setting up disk drives, you may be asked for this timeout duration. That is, the maximum amount of time that you want to allow without forcing a run of FSCK on a reboot. When the system is booting and FSCK is running, you'll see its display on the screen giving you a graphic percentage of its completion as it scans the disk. It'll find most things and fix them, but occasionally it will defer to you to decide how to handle a situation. To do this, it just prints out a brief message explaining the problem, then this script will throw you into a root login shell so you can run FSCK yourself. If this happens, just run FSCK from the command line and it will ask questions as it goes. Then, when that's all done, it'll start the boot process over again. This time, hopefully, it will pass all the tests and continue with the boot. This script loads up some of the basic routines that need to be in place to handle hardware. Some hardware is special and needs to be recognized before the boot process can continue. One example of this is a USB bus. If you have one, now is the time for it to start working. Another example would be a RAID disk drive setup. Now, this kind of special disk drive has its own special setup, so it has its own setup sequence here in this script. Some cleanup activities take place to get rid of useless stuff that could have been left over from the previous processes. Here you see where it cleans up some things in the VAR directory, where lots of programs store temporary data. Other work areas may also need some cleaning. Then, at the very end of the script, some status values are stored and some things are displayed. Things like the current date and time and so forth. The very last thing this does is invoke the wait command, which will wait until all child processes have completed. This is because this script starts processes running in the background and some of them may not have finished. By waiting at the very end, it's assured that nothing is left pending when this script ends. The next script to execute is the one named RC. It's probably the most interesting one, and we'll be getting to it in the very next lesson. But before we do that, let's take a look at rc.local. 
After everything has been done and the system is up and running, this script, named rc.local, is executed. If you have something that you want to have happen every time the system boots, this is one place to put it. For example, I have a script that I added to set up this machine as an internet firewall for the other computers on my local network, and I execute that script right here.